Welcome to today's webinar, everybody. I'm Chip Broyles, Director of Business Development here at Resmark. I have our CEO, Brandon Lake, with me today, who's also co-founder of Moab Adventure Center and is an owner of Western River Expeditions, which is one of the largest rafting companies in America. Well, it's good to be with you, Chip. I'm, I'm really excited about our webinar topic today. It's uh, we're going to be covering a 10-step formula that Moab Adventure Center has implemented this year, and we've seen some really great sales progress as a result. Nice. I'm excited to get into this, but before we get started, let me give everybody listening just a quick background on Resmark. So for those that don't know, we have recently launched a brand new Resmark platform. It's an all-in-one reservation and marketing solution that handles online reservations, in-house reservations, digital waivers, marketing automation, and distribution management. The new Resmark and WaverSign platform is used by hundreds of companies all over the world. And one of these companies is the Moab Adventure Center. Brandon, give us a little background on Moab Adventure Center and get into how and why you've implemented this 10-step formula. Sure. So I, I'm going to back way up here, Jim. Whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> long time ago. Just so everybody has a little better understanding of how Moab Adventure Center and Resmark even got started. Okay. Um, so our story really begins back in 2002. Um, our operation in Moab, Utah at, at this time was actually struggling to okay. turn a significant profit. We had, we had even contemplated shutting down mm. multiple times. We couldn't seem to find the right strategy to grow this business. So it was about this time um, my wife and I, there we are, you know, several years <laughs> nice. ago, back Definitely. when I had some really sweet sideburns. Look at those things. <laughs> right there, oh yeah. We took my mom on vacation to Branson, Missouri. Now, here's the interesting thing about Branson. Oh, there's a lot it, of interesting things about Branson, <laughs> but yes, go ahead. So one, one of them is it's a fairly small town, right? It has a population <laughs> just over 11,000 people. <laughs> but it attracts over 7.2 million <laughs> annual visitors. And Branson has, in fact, more theater seats than Broadway in New York. Wow. And, and during our trip, I quickly learned how they're filling every seat every night all year long. Okay. So this is what happened. We actually went to this show, okay, right here. This guy is still around, so. by the way. Um, his haircut changes from time to time, but he's still there. So his name's Shoji Tabuchi, incredible violin. I want the mo haircut, mo. I like it like mo. And so when you book when you book a show like the Shoji Tabuchi show, uh -huh. what was happening back then is they would they would also sell you tickets to Acrobats of Shanghai nice. and the Hollywood Wax Museum. Uh -huh. And if you bought tickets to the Hollywood Wax Museum. They'd sell you tickets to Jim Stafford and Elvis nice. and Frank Sinatra. And it goes on and on. Now, keep in mind, this is in 2002. So right. This right, is right, right, right. well before our online ticketing services were even a big deal. And these businesses had truly figured out how to work together for the benefit of every business. And as a result, check this out. They're generating over $2 billion in tourism every year. 11,000 people generating $2 billion. Nice. <laughs> right. So I, I come back to our little town of Moab, Utah, and I realize back in 2002, we're yeah. doing exactly the opposite. If you walk down the main street of Moab in 2002, you'd find companies selling rafting tours, right. national park tours, off-road tours, horseback riding, uh, rock climbing, mountain biking, and, and the list goes on and on. Right. But not one of them is collaborating with each other. And it makes it totally inconvenient and confusing for someone on vacation to really plan a full week of activities. And, and of course, they're wasting the potential they had to be more successful by working with one another. Right. So about this time, we're selling rafting tours, and that was it. Our annual guest count was only about 3,000 people. Okay. So one day, my partner and I are on a drive back from Moab after visiting a new potential location for our property. And we're discussing this new concept. We decided we call it Moab Adventure Center, and we would sell every type of tour from the very best suppliers in the area, in addition to our own tours. Right. We were going to build out our tour selection a little bit, uh, beyond just the rafting, and then add some other stuff into it. The vision soon became a reality, and bookings actually shot up 300% in the first year. Wow. So the problem was, we're taking nearly every booking using pen and paper. Now, given the number of people we were booking, it was totally inefficient. We knew we needed a system, but at the time, there were very few reservation systems on the market, and nothing really matched our vision of, of what was needed. So we're a small business, and we wanted a system that would automate all of this. The sales process is along the entire customer journey. 
and that would help facilitate these new supplier relationships we're developing. Okay. So after three years and a very significant investment and development, the first version of Resmark was launched. And the impact at Moab Adventure Center was incredible. Our booking skyrocketed. Our cost of sales actually decreased substantially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But after about 10 years of significant growth, our bookings at Moab Adventure Center started to plateau. And since about 2014, we just haven't seen that much increase. You might expect a curve like that in some businesses, I guess, Brandon, but knowing what I know about the visitation to the Moab area, indeed all of all of the West out here, um, that probably is not a happy feeling, is it? Uh, right. And and no, you hit exactly, Chip. I mean it's this would be more concerning if we knew we had the same amount of travelers in town each of those years. But if you look at visitation uh, to Moab, and we track that through visitation to the national parks, right, arches right. in particular, um, it's more concerning when you see that visitation is increasing by hundreds of thousands of people over the same time period. So there's more and more people in town yet. Um, right. You see, This is what you see happening on our website. Okay. So in 2014, we see a slight drop in overall sessions. Okay. In 2015, even bigger drop. Not, right. I mean, not, not huge, significant, but, still, but, but yeah. you know, it's kind of reflective of that plateau. Um, 2016, still dropping. still dropping. Now, in case this isn't sinking in, all these numbers you're seeing on the screen, those are not good. Red is not good. No, green I'm usually thinking is a happier color. I'm right. just guessing. If I'm <laughs> Right, we want these numbers to be green, right? So in 2017, things to fall off, things start to fall <clears throat> off even more. And, and in 2018... We step back and we put together this new formula to turn this to turn this around. So by the end of the same year, we also launched the new Resmark platform, and we're ready to see the impact of both of these things coming together. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. It's a ten-step formula that completely turned things around for Moab Adventure Center, and one you can really use to grow your own business. Nice. I like this. Should I bust out some uh, theme music or something? <laughs> I feel, you know, it's, I mean, this is great. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to have future webinars to dig deeper into, into one of each one of these steps, but today I just want to briefly touch on each of them. So we sort of understand the whole, uh, the whole formula. Perfect. Let's do um, it. So what you're about to see here really relates just, you know, it relates to Moab Adventure Center, but I want everyone to understand that the concept we're discussing, they're not just for Moab Adventure Center. Or, or even for tour companies, for that matter. Um, they really apply to any experience. So I'm hoping you can apply them to your business. So, and that, that's whether you're selling tubing experiences for kids. Always a good idea. <laughs> or tractor pulling for seniors. You never know what people are into these days. <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that you'll really find some application for at least some, if not all, of these steps. So, let's get into it. Step one of our 10-step process here is to drive online traffic. So we started by asking one simple question. What is it that our potential customers are asking about our business, okay. our industry, or our location? Okay. Okay. Now, we know that for Moab Adventure Center, we're talking about all these people who are driving through Arches National Park each year. A lot of them right. come for that. They come for other things in Moab as well. Um, what do they want to know about the area? Now, where do most people go when, when they, they want to when they want to know questions? something? Google. Yes. Right? <laughs> people ask everything to Google. Now, you know how you can start a query in Google and Google will sort of predict yeah. what you're going to type. Yeah, I start to type and it kind of says and it, is and this it sort what of finishes thinking? your sentence yeah. based on what other people have already typed in before you, sure. right? Yeah. In common searches. So, it's crazy what people ask. Take a, take a look. Okay? I'm excited. You start with a query like, what would a... Uh, and Google is going to finish the sentence, okay? People are asking, what would a chair look like if your knees bent the <laughs> other way? So... This uh, is one I, of the things. <laughs> what would an accountant use a spreadsheet for? All right, but what now? What would a chair? What would a chair look like, Brandon? So I, I, I had this popped up. I had to think about this for a minute. <laughs> I'm looking down at my chair. And I couldn't sorry. envision it. So <laughs> I had to. I actually had to click on it and figure this out. There it is. Wait a minute. There's more going on oh, there than just the knees. <laughs> no, I mean, it has it's all of the answers it. to the world's most important questions. Oh my okay? gosh. So. Back to what matters for our business. You can, you can actually use that little Google Suggest tool, yeah. uh, even with your own business, right? You can type in 
start typing in something about your area and you'll see a lot of the suggestions. And oh, right. Combine right. that with like an SEO tool and you can actually find out really how popular different queries okay. are for your area. So using those kinds of tools, um, we found out what people are asking about Arches and Modern. just a small sample. But here's some of the que common questions, just to give you an example. So what should I do in Moab? Uh, can you drive through Arches National Park? Where should I camp in Arches National Park? Tell me about lodging in Moab, the best mountain bike trails, the top restaurants. Now, these aren't all things that we sell. We're not a restaurant. Right. Right. Um, somebody wants to go out and ride a bike trail. We have guided services, but... Um, you right, know, but they're, these they're are questions not, people are still right, asking. But there are people, they're asking questions, right? Those same people asking these questions, we view them as our customers, or potential customers, right. right? So we want to put this information in front of them. So what do we do? We answer the questions, right? Simple as that. And we answer them by building content. And we put the content on our website. Okay. Okay. So here's just a quick example. In our case, we built pages about driving through Arches National Park, right? One of the questions. So we answered it. We built content about lodging in Moab, um, content about mountain bike trails. In all, uh, we built about 1,220 pages. Uh, you can add content. one more. It could be 1221 if you have the seat backwards. Like That's backward yeah. anything. I mean, they probably are asking that. <laughs> Obviously. How do I mountain bike in Utah if my knees bend the wrong way? <laughs> Actually, that happened to me one year in Moab, but that's a different story. <laughs> so we look at all of these pages we built. We refine each of them for speed and optimal content, which we're going to cover in, a, in another webinar totally devoted to this, this single topic we're discussing okay. right here. But, but here's the result. So we're getting top organic rankings on things like driving through Arches National Park, um, Moab lodging, bike trails in Moab, and, and hundreds of other keyword phrases, obviously, that relate to all of this. So the result is pretty cool. So we get a 29% increase in new users coming to the website from organic traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay, We're seeing a lot more green on the screen now, right? right? Yeah. And it's, you can see how things are starting to turn around there with this one, this, this one step of our formula here. Um, that's 42,000 more users from organic traffic. And the result is $354,000 more in revenue. Wow. Now, you know, I mean, there's something to be said if, if for planning ahead. You guys are obviously taking, it's not free revenue because you're paying you're paying people to build these pages. You've got website people, right, that to build this content. No, that's, that's right. No, that's that. a good point. But but unlike a paid ad, right, when we stop paying, we still get results, right? Oh, so that right, content, yeah. that content, it stays still there. there. You know, I pay for an ad in Google or something, and and that's it, you know, as soon as I t take the budget away from it, it's the gone. ad's gone. You know, and I don't get the traffic anymore. So. Not that ads are, are wrong or bad or anything, but this, you know, I love this strategy because, right. you know, if you're on a limited budget, you can likely take some people with sure. expertise yourself if you run your own little business or whatever, and you could do some of this in the off season. Absolutely. And, and Everybody has discount, access you know? to this. Good so <clears throat> now the increase in revenue didn't simply come from having more traffic. Okay. Notice, notice the increase in revenue is much greater as a percentage. 64% plus. Nice. Yeah. Now, if you combine that, okay, to that's compared to a twenty nine percent increase in users. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so these are happier. If, if with revenue is the same, it would have been a twenty nine percent increase in users and a twenty nine percent increase in revenue. But you can see the revenue is almost double that. Yeah. So these people are not only are getting more, but the people that are there are spending more than they used to. So what did we do to convert so much more of the online traffic than before? This this is where the rest of this our formula step comes two. in, right? Okay. So step two is initiate contact. Okay. And, uh, you know, marketing is about conversations. It, it always has been. You go back in time, that's, that's where things have always started. You know, we're spreading the word about something. So the question for us was, how do we get the conversation started? Right. Now, I'm just going to mention three, three things that we implemented. There's three ways you can kind of initiate contact. Now, some of these are just super, super simple. Right. Not going to take much time, but it's funny how often they get overlooked. Right. And, and of course, our main goal for all of us here is that someone, someone hits the site and they book several tours right away. Right. I mean, that's of course, that's our, our primary goal. But when that doesn't happen immediately, these three things are really key. OK. And again, they're super straightforward and simple. First, we made our phone number super easy to find. 
Okay. In our case, we put it right at the top of the website, yep. inside a box that draws attention. It's funny how many times you go onto a website or something oh, and yeah. you cannot, you, know, you want to make a call, you have a question, and you just can't find it. So look at your own website. How, how easy is that to find? In our case, you know, right there at the top. Second, we added live chat to our website. Now, we tried to make it obvious. Um, mm -hmm. The tools we use have some different banners and things. We turn those on. Um, we also make it appear automatically, you know, using different rules based on where they are, how long they've been there, are they coming back? You know, the, the chat tools can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so it's kind of like someone walking up to you in a retail store. Yep. Right? Makes sense. Um, and that makes a big result. The last thing we did, the third, is uh, we came up with something really valuable to our customers. Um, and we offered to email it to them. It's an insider's guide to Moab. It has information on restaurants, things to do, an area map, lots of fun information that only an insider would know. And people love it. Um, we, we had this guide for several years, but this time we tried something new on our website. We put this form at the bottom of almost every page okay. on our website. And it's incredible, a small thing like that, but it's incredible how many more leads we're getting as a result. Right. Now, to build the form, I wanted to show you a couple pieces of Resmark. We haven't really seen that yet, but we're going to show you the application here for just a minute. So to build the form, we go into Resmark, and under the cruise control module here, that's our marketing automation right. section of the application, we, we can build an unlimited number of lead forms. Um, so we use them on our other website for expedition guys for each of our longer, more expensive trips. Um, a contact form can even be built in here, all, all kinds of stuff, nice. right? So in this case, we're talking about this, um, you know, this insider's guide request form. The forms are super easy to build. You have all the field, all the standard fields that you'd expect. Plus, you can put as many custom fields in there so as you, you want. Gather as whatever well. information mm -hmm. you want from these forms. You copy the embed code, and uh, and you just put it in the website and the. When any, anyone fills out that form, we get notified right inside. You know, we can get an email notification if we turn that on. It goes right into the system, and their contact information is automatically added to Resmark. In fact, if they already had a record, Just their, to their information is updated with the new request, which is really cool because now I can maintain a history of you know all sure. the times they've inquired, what they've asked what they've for, inquired about. what I've communicated to them. All of that's in there. And now we're driving more traffic to the website. Right? right, and we've implemented these three easy ways to initiate contact. Okay, so we've got that in place, which brings us to our next step. So once once we've we now have a, an increased number of contacts sitting in our database, right? right? Because we're generating more traffic, we're initiating these conversations or, or starting these uh, grading contacts, you know, from the lead form, and now we have that contact sitting in our database. So our next step is to follow up. And convert the lead into a sale, right? It doesn't do much good. Just no. I mean, just it to gather. We've got some good information. Sure. We've been helpful, but taking it a step further is, is sort of the next obvious thing to do, right? So within Cruise Control, you can actually set up as many lead follow-up emails as you want. So here you can see the first few emails we've set up for Moab Adventure Center. To create a message, you simply click New Message, and you select the type of message you want. You enter your parameters. Uh, when you want the message to trigger, this could be uh, days, hours, or even minutes after the lead was created. Okay. Um, we find even doing something really short like this, you know, 30 minutes after the inquiry is is a great way to trigger something because they may still be still they could even be know, on the way. You know, they could still be really thinking about it. So Absolutely. it's nice to say it there. And you know, it's like, gosh, you guys responded quickly. Um, and then you customize your message. Now, the key with each of these is try to be helpful. And personal right okay you can see in this email we're actually sending a link to a video and so here's our operations manager Jason um, he's a Moab local mm -hmm. he explains how to make the most of your time in Moab you know which I, you know, people love video content and you know it's a great thing to drive them towards so we have other emails like this one um, this one will is, is super short it simply asks a question Oh, nice. Right. So uh, at the end of this, the, uh, the idea here is you want to open up a conversation. So right. End with a question so that they feel compelled yeah. to, to write back. That's exactly right. So in this case, you know, you can see we're not really trying to drive them to the website like the other one with mm. the video, right? The, um, we're just saying, can I help you? You know, and, and it's great. People respond to this. That conversation starts. And well, and it's personal too. It's right. easy for somebody to respond back to that. So, uh, what happens when somebody books then? If if they really do follow through and say, "Okay, no, I'm, I yeah. do want to book." No, that's a great question. So, 
The, and that's the beauty of having a system like Cruise Control built directly inside of Resmark. You know, you might have another marketing automation system on the outside, but it's often hard or air prone oh, yeah. to have the two really speak to each other properly. Um, so having this right inside the application, as soon as a person makes a booking, the follow-up emails stop automatically and a different string of messages begin. So, and, and that's really what we refer to as marketing automation. And it's not really even something that's built just around the lead follow-up concept. It continues oh, you yeah. know, through the application. And we'll see some of that. And, and it's automatic because Resmark is taking care, of, taking care of it for us. So if we look at the results of what marketing research does for you, right? Nucleus Research conducted a study revealing that sales grew by 14.5% for companies that implemented marketing automation software. That's so easy. Um, those same companies experienced a 12.2% reduction in marketing costs. Mm -hmm. So not only are we increasing sales, but we're reducing costs. The combination of that is pretty huge. And like I said, a lot of times marketing automation can be quite challenging to set up, yeah. right? But when you have it built into the same system where the bookings are occurring, the process becomes so much easier. Well, because you're so, tracking all of that in right. Resmar, the lead, the date, the travel yeah. date, the, you know, the and, booking date. Exactly. Like and as you choose the message type you want, Resmar kind of has, you know, a little pre-canned message. And you kind of go, oh, okay, I could use that or, mm -hmm. or I could, you know, change this a little bit. And, and, and as so many of these messages will keep driving your potential customers back to your website, our, our next step, which is key, is to make sure that the booking process is easy. Okay. So how much of a difference does this really make? Take a look at this. Okay. <clears throat> After we implemented what I'm about to show you, along with the new Resmark platform, we saw our online revenue increase by over half a million dollars. <sighs> so here's what we did. And again, some of these are going to seem just so straightforward and simple, but again, they get overlooked. Um, so whenever we list a tour, we make sure there is an absolutely simple path to purchase. Prominent call to action that you don't have to search for, Absolutely. right? You can see even in our minor listings, you can you can learn more, or if you're ready, you're coming back, you can just click Boom. and book, okay? We present lots of pages for each tour. Again, this kind of goes back to the content, but um, when we have these different pages, you'll see that the book now, no matter where you go, it's always, it's always going to same. be in the same place, right. right? For every single page. We also present the same button in multiple places on the page. Now, if we have a similar page for a different tour, say something like this one, right? You'll find consistency. And again, really easy to implement, but it may require a little web website, you know, design, redesign, or sure. thinking through it. But but once you have that, it's amazing the difference it makes. So we can let's go let's go ahead and walk through the process of a booking. Okay, so you see the online booking process here in Resmark that we have embedded into the Moab Adventure Center website. Okay, I just come in here and I'm gonna go to the, uh, I'm going to book my adventure. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to enter my quantity here. Ink, ink. And then I'm going to select the date that I'm looking at. Okay. Right. And I'll go ahead and select a time, review everything I have here. We'll add to cart. Nice. And uh, review my selection there. Resmark puts a lot of, you can customize all of this stuff that we're seeing here, which has been really nice for us. The start was, times, the end time. Right, a description of where they're meeting and what, you know, all of that kind right. of stuff, which has been really, really nice. Google um, map meeting location. All of that. Um, and then we put in some, the customer information, right? We come down, policies are totally customizable. You put in whatever you want there. So, and this kind of parallels what's going on in, if you were booking this over the phone, right? sure. we won't see that here today, but um, I agree to the policies and we go ahead and complete the order. I submit, you know, enter my payment information, submit that. Now notice that when we were backing up a step here, when we went through the customer information, we only, we only gathered the customer information. Right. Right. And the reason is we found that the more information and decisions have to, people have to make during the booking process, the fewer people actually make it. To check sense. out, right? So again, the tip here is to make the booking process easy. Okay. Now, in step five is where we actually. Some of you may be thinking, oh, you know, maybe you collect all the participant data before checkout. What happens to that? We absolutely collect it. Sure. And it is, and it is absolutely critical to step six and seven in our formula. So we're going to talk about how we get it here. Okay. So when after after I submit this payment right here. 
I've actually taken to the confirmation. My booking is totally complete, Okay. but then something immediately pops up. I'm told that one or more guests are missing required details. I, I love this step in Resmark. It's something the old Resmark platform didn't have, but, but this has really changed things for us because it makes all the difference to our marketing and customer service because we end up getting the information for all of these people way earlier. Way earlier. You know, they, it's just, it's great. So the, the people click view guests in the little window. They're taken down to this section of the page where they're prompted to enter missing details for each guest. Okay. Now, using the custom fields in Resmark, I can collect just about anything I need to operate this tour. But I'm not yet worried about all of the contact information. Okay. Okay. At this step, the person simply fills out the fields I need to operate this tour. They click save and they're brought to this point. Now, they see they need to sign some required documents prior to their participation. Okay. And this is where we see waiver sign really beautifully built right into Resmark. Okay, they, they click get started. They fill in their information that will be used in the process of signing their documents. And this is where we're gonna get phone numbers, date of birth, address information, whatever it is you wanna collect you know, for that standard contact information. We've already collected the custom stuff, you know, heights or weights or right, you know, right, wetsuit right. size or whatever it might be. We collected that back on the, on the Resmark side. So here in waiver sign, all of this contact information. Um, once they've filled that out, they click next and they read through the document, apply their signature, okay, they click agree and submit, and they're done. And they're taken right back to where they started. Now, you'll notice the record is, is now green, green yeah. right? And it can't be changed unless the person calls the company. And that's been a real key thing for us because you don't want someone to slip in some last minute details or do a name change or tell you they have an allergy at the last second oh, or, yeah, you know, when you're ready to already operate this thing. So we've, so that's, you know, that's been really, really helpful for us. So we've gathered the customer information, which is great because we, we have some additional contact and demographic information for a customer, but we would usually get that anyways, right? I right. Mean, no, that's true. But the magic of the formula really starts with getting the data for these additional guests. Right. Okay. And it gets even more exciting when many of our reservations have several participants. And using waiver sign, we can collect uh, the contact information and the demographic information for every single one of them. You can even view the real-time results of that data collection directly in the application. In fact, when we started using waiver sign together with Resmark, we tripled our email database and we collected all the other valuable data for these guests. So this really makes a difference as to how you can interact with not just the customer, but also the other guests leading up to the, the start time of the tour. Right? No, and that's and that is the key, Chip. I mean, it's it's exactly what will make all the difference in the, in these next steps of the formula. So hold on a minute. Before we get into these next steps, let's review a couple things. Um, so step one, we need to drive online traffic to the website. That's right. We do that by creating a ton of new pages and content, right? Uh, we By answering the questions that we know that people are asking, okay? As a result, then we see a big increase in organic traffic coming in. Right. So then we want to talk with those folks. So we initiate contact. Uh, we've got call us, obviously. Prominent it, phone number. Yep. Yeah, we got some chat uh, options if, right. if that's applicable yep. to our business. Mm -hmm. But we leverage the Resmark lead forms um, and drop that onto the website. Right. Super easy. Yep. Now that we've got their contact info, we don't want to forget about them. We need to follow up because right. we want to continue that conversation yep. that we've begun. Yep. And we need a real system to help automate that so, oh, we're, yeah. so we're consistent, right? Right. So then uh, using Resmark, we set up several automated emails and let Resmark do that work for us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yep. And then have book now buttons all over that are yeah. consistent. Let's say what you want to say. Yeah, if you don't like to book my adventure, it's a book now. Right, exactly. Um, we've got an easy mobile friendly booking process in Resmark, so that yeah. helps. And, yeah. that's and it's interesting you mentioned that. I, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, I was just looking at, we're, we actually just opened up our uh, 2021 season for Grand Canyon trips this oh, morning, right. yeah. and, or last night actually, and it was just crazy. But I mean, in, a, in a, such a short period of time, I think we opened it up in the first minute, the first 60 seconds, there were 14 bookings, you know, and and half of them were on mobile. Oh, right. I mean, it was, you know, people are deaf. That's really an important thing um, right. to it, you know. And then, of course, 
you know, I mentioned we've seen that massive increase in sales as a result of doing all of this. Right. right. And then that, that step five, yep. which is collecting the participant data. And just to, just to be, be sure to, that we point this out, you can customize that booking process in Resmark. So at the time of booking, all you, you may just want first name, last name, email address from the customer. You know, in your case, you super want more easy. than that, yeah. but super easy. It's after we get that deposit or that balance paid right there, whatever you require. Then we collect the participant data afterwards. Somebody had chatted in a question about that. And, yeah. you know, just, it, just I love clarifying. making it super simple. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I don't know who the six people are coming with me yet, and I certainly don't know their heights and weights. Again, that happens after we collect the money and the, the order is created. Right. So, yeah. anyway. Okay. So. so so we use waiver sign to do that, and we use the guest details page. And just for the record, I heard in the Western River office this morning, I heard some of the ladies saying how excited they already were that because a Resmark and waiver sign working together pop up right that people have already yeah, signed their hundreds waivers. Hundreds and hundreds of signatures. Which waivers, yeah. normally just would have taken all the way up until the final time and mm -hmm. triggering on. And now because when you log in, you you see that when you're managing your reservation online. And so people have already started signing their yeah. waivers. It's fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, that, and it really helps us collect the information for each participant, of course, as they go in and sign their individual waivers. And, and I think the key you mentioned there, Chip, was that it gives us you know, more contact information, not just for the customer, but for every adult participant on the reservation. Huge. And uh, as I mentioned before, that that is the real key to these next steps we're going to look at. Okay. So once we have that, we now have the contact information for, for all of these people. We're ready to move into step six. Okay. Well, let's which move is, through them. <laughs> which is begin the experience. Okay. Now, most of us might think as the experience of the tour or activity itself, right? But we really do have a window of time when we can start that experience well before that. Mm. You know, the experience for all those people who just booked that trip, they, it begins now with our company. You know, it may have begun during the sales process too, sure. but, but we can really strengthen our relationship with these people. And that window occurs between the time of booking and the start of the activity itself. Now, the window might be less than seven days, meaning for us, that's kind of our cut off type are saying they could be in town. Yeah. So, a lot of cases so we might communicate with them a little bit differently uh, knowing that. We may only have one or two touch points we can make. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be booking this the day before. Um, or the window might be more than seven days or several months or even a year or more in advance, right? In which case we have an opportunity to have several touch points. And we really have to think about both groups. Sure. So in Resmark, we have two sets of messages. Messages that are sent out a certain number of days after purchase or booking and messages that are sent out a certain number of days before the activity, right? Okay. Now, while some of these are reminders about unsigned waivers or payments due or other time-saving type messages, which are awesome, within these time frames, I really like to send out three types of messages that are more about the customer service and the experience, right? So first, I like to send messages like this one that upsell our experiences. I, I feel I've always felt like the more people experience with us, the more connected to their overall experience they're going with to feel and, and really the stronger their relationship with, mm -hmm. with our company, right? Because they've, they have more, many more touch points. Mm -hmm. So notice the little send option at the top of the screen, okay. right? You can actually choose whether you want your message to go out to the customer only or all the other people on the reservation as well. Well, which was why it's so important to gather all that participant info and contact info for the right. for each guest. I mean, you know, it might be, so I say I was booking something with my family, right? It might be that my it's my wife who opens the email. It probably would be. <laughs> and she would say, hey, there's other stuff to be done here. You know, let's, let's do some of these while we're there. Maybe the only time we're going to this location. Sure. Let's really make it count, right? And that makes a huge difference. Um, so I'm usually setting each of our emails to send to all participants mm, okay. for, for most of these types of emails. Not necessarily a payment overdue or something. Sure. But these types, yes. Second, I like to send messages that help set expectations. If we ever get any negative reviews, mm -hmm. they are more often related to a gap with expectations regarding things like water levels or weather, yeah, that stuff that's sense. just completely out of our control. Those of you who operate, you know, similar, <laughs> have a similar operation, you get what I'm saying. So here's one thing we did. And this one goes out right before the trip. Um, if someone has booked, say, a full day or a half day rafting trip, 
I, it makes sense. I mean, I could see a big difference in reviews if people understand that there's potential things that can happen right. yeah. and out of our control. Right. And so we're pointing out water levels, uh, you know, what to expect during this time of year. We're pointing out weather. We're talking about attitude, you know, some of these things. Attitude's and it, a good one. And it really does help. Drink water. <laughs> uh, the last thing I like to send out messages that provide information that's just really helpful. In this email, we provide a link to a video of our CEO uh, talking about the best ways to get to Moab, get around in town. And, uh, you know, really sets us apart from the competition and uh, just makes people grateful that they chose Mob Adventure Center. And uh, it's amazing how many comments we'll get before about the communication people receive before their trip. Oh, yeah. You know, I, when they come back, just tell us, oh, you were so helpful. At least yeah. the people that chose to read. Obviously, yeah, there yeah, are yeah, people yeah. that do not. Yeah, but a lot of people do, that, and, but they, and they really appreciate it, you know. So... So what do you have activities there that you don't want to send an email for? Like sometimes it's a particular. Yeah, uh, well, that's a really good question. Um, in fact, what, this is one really cool thing about Resmark. If, if you is you can actually set messages to send only when certain activities are booked or you can even send like that one I just showed you. Right. That was about, you know, water levels. That Which has, wouldn't make has sense nothing to do when you're hiking horseback. in arches. Or right. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so you can actually say this one, or that's the settings for that email. I, okay. I said, only send it for these three trips. Nice. And that's really, you know, really flexible. You end up maybe setting up more emails, but your messages can be so, you know, customized to exactly what you need to send. The other cool thing is you can actually see exactly what messages every contact has opened. And not only can you see what they've opened, but you can see the exact links they've clicked, including, including the date and time they clicked them. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have that in the old platform, and that yeah. is, that's exciting. No, it's just really, really cool. Like you'd see the full interaction. So once you've upsold other activities, um, you've sent helpful communication to your guests, you've set expectations, and your guest has had the experience they've always dreamed of, <laughs> You're ready to move on. Because I've step. always had that same dream of wearing horns. And yeah. <laughs> oh, did you have the Viking dream? I've had, I had the Viking dream, in fact, just last night. But let's yeah. not get into that right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at this point, you're ready to move on to the next step, okay? which is to solicit sharing. So after you've really created this relationship with your guests, not just through the activity itself, but the whole interaction with your company, right? this step becomes very natural and way more effective. So we solicit sharing in two ways. First, of course, is to get all of our participants to share their experience in the form of a review. Okay, Now, I'm sure everyone's doing this, uh, but the fact that we now have contact information for every participant from our digital waiver integration, mm -hmm. the waiver sign, our chances of getting more reviews goes way up, and we've, we, we've totally seen that happen. Um, again, it might be my wife that, that writes the review, not me. You know, when I was the, right. Maybe I was the customer, right? In our case, we send a message to every guest that makes it really easy to share reviews on TripAdvisor, on Facebook, on Yelp or Google, okay? and those are kind of our, and you, you know, you may have different platforms you're using, but that's, that's sure. where we send our people. And the next way we ask for people to share might not be something that everyone is doing. We make it easy for them to share their stories actually on our website. Mm. And then we share those public, and then they can share those published stories with their friends. So here's how it goes. Then emails triggered from Resmark after the trip, the guests are directed right to our website where they can upload a picture and they can write their story. So some of the stories are short and sweet. Right. Others are much longer. The emotion. But I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Some of them write poems. Yeah. Right. But each of them end up creating content for the website. And as we learned in our first step, that's key. Going to help with search right? results. So in, in fact, we do the same thing for our Western River Expeditions websites, and posts like these have created over three thousand pages for us on that website. Oh, that's cool. And then you start seeing some rankings for keywords like freaking. Awesome. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Which, sure enough, has about 300 people that type that phrase in every month. What, uh, what kind of things are freaking awesome? <laughs> I like that. That so, is freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, what a great way to build content that drives traffic. Yeah. And that's exactly what I love about it, Absolutely. right? People are, you know, it's driving traffic, and, uh, and it is awesome. So you'll notice that the first seven steps of our formula feed each other and create a cycle. We often portray it like this. Mm -hmm. It's really the journey of our guests, right? And Resmark facilitates each step of the way, allowing us to see big increases in satisfaction and revenues. Now, the last couple steps in our formula bring customers into this cycle from a slightly different angle. Okay. Okay. And the other ones are coming directly to us from, you know, with our website and so forth. Right. So let's, but let's run through these. Uh, for Moab Adventure Center, they've really provided some great results. So step eight, 
was to get bookings from other local sources. Okay. Now, using Resmark True Connect, which is another one of the modules right. inside the system, we were able to give complimentary Resmark accounts to both outside travel agents and local hotels and even other tour providers in town. Okay. And so far this year, it's generated over $143,000 in additional revenue from local sources. And we're nice. just, you know, just getting just this getting set up. Going. So I'm really excited about where this is going in the future. Um, and keep in mind, this is only those who logged in directly to the system. Okay. And they made their booking without taking any of our time on the phone. Oh, okay. That's what this okay. number right, represents, right, right, right. right? So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, our next step is related. And it's to sell experiences from other local sources. Right. Okay. So, and again, you know, our, this has kind of been this our Mob Adventure concept. Center no, concept right. from the beginning. It's what's but taken it's still us how you do it. Yeah. It comes down right. to how and, you do it. And other businesses can really do this, you know. Um, and using a system like Resmark True Connect, we've been able to n not only have other companies sell for us like I showed before, but we've been able to sell the tours from other local suppliers. Right. Okay. So, since we're looking directly at their real-time availability... Which Just as if, we, as if we were like an extension of their office. Mm -hmm. We've been able to sell with far less friction and, and inefficiency. As Which before. is what, you know, historically in the past, you'd have to, if it was a last minute booking, you'd have to call up and say, is it okay if I get these people on your tour? Right. Uh, and well, hold on, let me check. Now, in, in the new Rosemark platform, you're looking at live yeah, availability. It's the same so thing they would see. If they've decided last minute to take something offline or whatever, we see that. Right? Okay. But, if they're, but if it's still available to book, we can access it just like... You know, okay. and we don't have to make that phone call. So, so the all results of that is gone. with the new platform. So it helped us generate over three hundred and thirteen thousand dollars in additional revenue. Overselling this is overselling the same supplier tours the previous year. Huh. So we were already selling these. Just implementing this new process with the new platform has really bumped huge up with sales. the silent age. Yeah, <laughs> huge. So our last step in the formula here, Chip, is to repeat, report, and refine. Nice. So we, of course, use the reports in Resmark, as well as our analytics reports, you know, some of which you saw little pieces of today. And, uh, and we continually improve this process. That's really what it's all about. That's fantastic, right. Brandon. So from, from the numbers, this formula has really turned things around for Moab Adventure Center. When you find something that works, it only makes sense to keep doing it and continually improve upon it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I am looking forward to more of all of these kinds of webinars to continue to learn in the coming months as we as we continue this webinar series and dig into each of these steps and, and other ones that we'll, we'll define along the way. So this is a great beginning, Brandon. So we've touched on some really important practices today that can really make a difference for a ton of companies. It doesn't even matter what, you know, what type of business, what type of tour company in a lot of ways. I mean, this is good, good business sense for anything, yeah. um, even a dental office for crying out loud or a, or a orthopedic in the case of your knees folding backwards the yeah, other way well, but so before we close today there were a couple questions that came in i if there were a couple that came in brandon that we are actually already answered and we kind of weaved them in but but as we and if, and if anybody has some final questions yeah, we'll go through the ones we've received so far but if you do have some feel free to there's a chat feature you should see that at the, right. the bottom of your screen you can you can send those in so there's a couple a couple that came in that I didn't quite get to. So um, one that, that came in in the chat thing said, I've been using waiver sign for the past six months, and I love it. After hearing this, I'm thinking about upgrading to the full Resmark suite um, so I can have all my participants register online as well as sign their waiver like they're already doing. What is the upgrade process like and how easy is it? Okay. So that that's, that's a great question. Yeah. I'll, um, I can answer that. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, upgrade. So you've probably noticed if you're a waiver sign only person, you've probably noticed on that land the the home screen when you land there that you see Resmark, True Connect, and and uh, and what's the other thing? All of a sudden, I'm just cruise missing. control. Cruise right. control. Thank you. That those things are grayed out. Um, just send an email to help at waiversign.com and you'll talk to our helpful support staff. It's so easy for them to turn it on for you. It's little check boxes in the background. They can have it turned on within a couple minutes. You'd log back into your waiver sign application, Resmark application, and you will, they'll help you get going and setting up your events, activities, as well as your payment processing so you can take, take credit card payments for those things right there. Yeah. So, and it's a, you know, having gone through the process of setting up what we call products in the new system, I mean, it's, 
it's a pretty straightforward process. The new system really makes it easy to go in and create, you know, your product name, where is it located, some marketing information about it, the pricing, um, the schedule of availability and so forth. It actually has some really cool stuff that we love that is a, it's an automatic inventory builder. So you put in like a template for the inventory. Say you're, you know, you operate, you have this thing goes every, every hour from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or something, and, and it goes from this date to this date in the year. You can just set that up, and it will it will just create your you know your season every single year for you. Which nice. Is, it's really 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 a time saving feature. So another person said, "Can you turn permissions on or off for each user in Resmark?" No, that's uh, and that's I'll a let, good question. You I'll know, let you answer. We that use that a lot answer. too, so I'll, I'll answer that one. The uh, the answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> you can actually go in. I don't know how many there are, but there are probably oh, there's tons. twenty plus, maybe thirty plus oh, permissions. Yeah. Um, even down to so granular as this user can see these three reports out of the entire list of reports, or <laughs> and what data can they see on the report? Can they see just the the reservations they made, or can they see um, data from other users that was put into the system, you know, um, right. or can they make an order? Can they cancel? Can they change the price on it? Can they do, you know, all of the, all the different permissions are there for so many things, right? You can even set up a user that only has access. If it's a web, oh, your web guy, for example, that needs to put a book now button, uh, and you don't want them messing with any of your orders or reservations or whatnot. You can make it so that that person does have access into Resmark, but all they can access is the, the, the book now widgets essentially yeah, the website widgets the website with yeah, widgets right. website widget section website widgets. so good so just to go we've got just a couple like, i know we're kind of inching over into 45 minutes here so just a couple more so uh how much another question was how much flexibility does my reservation staff have in customizing in-house bookings on the fly uh, they they said, can they do things like change pricing, change payment due dates, or other details? Um, yeah. yeah, short answer there is yes as well. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, we do we do that all the time too. So yeah, you can go in, you can edit pricing, you can change deposit um, balance amounts, you can actually change due dates uh, of those payments, you can customize discounts, add comments in, say where's the comment going to show? Is it going to show on the manifest? Does it show to the customer? Does it show just here for us internally? Um, you can personalize stuff. the confirmation email. You can even edit the product name on a per reservation basis, which is a new thing in the system that's been really kind of cool. We've, yeah. we've been able to use that for private charters, different things like that. Like that's just really cool. Yeah. Or you take a normal trip and this one happens to be special where it's going to be, we're going to have a chef on there that's going to, you know, and this is a, the, the chef. Right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'd be happy to run through some of those details on a demo at any point. Uh, so just go to the Resmark website, click on the, uh, get a demo and, and it'll hit me up and you'll be able to, I can explain a little bit further. Uh, Dana also asked, can we use the same account for multiple locations? or do we need separate accounts that's a good question you know you've got a couple different options there Dana um, when it, it depends on how you want to separate those businesses in the case of Brandon and Moab Adventure Center you know they have a business entity for Moab Adventure Center they also have a different business entity or a different account for Western River Expeditions and Brandon is a user in both of those accounts so he's able to toggle between those business entities when he wants to look at Western stuff um, um, and if he wants to look at Moab Venture Center stuff, he can he can log in that way. Yeah. But the, you can also set it up so that each of those business entities is cross-selling each other's activities if you want to. Right. So and that, the, other, the other cool thing with it, too, is like we have a really big hatchet-throwing franchise. Oh, right. Uh, Stumpies, right? And then they use WaverSign, and they've got, I don't know how many locations, 20-plus, oh, yeah. right? right? And so you can be like one of the – administrators and this may not be exactly how they do it but you could see you know you could log in and see all your locations or you might just have access to the location you work at you right know, which is right exactly yeah. so good question um last couple here and then we'll have to cut them off there's more questions than we can answer here but uh, do you guys have any kiosk check-in features um yeah <laughs> so short answer again yes um resmark check-in stuff yeah, we you got, use that we down use in that Moab. so i mean there, there's two different ways to use the kiosk i guess you can mm -hmm. use it if you're a full resmark user you can use it to uh for people to go up and actually check in mm -hmm. it checks each guest as checked in which is kind of cool and if 
uh, you're using waiver sign as well, it will dovetail directly into waiver sign and they can get all of their stuff signed if they if they haven't signed yet. Hopefully right. they've already signed because we try to get that well in advance to have this experience right. piece, right? But if they haven't, it takes care of all of that. If they have, it says it just checks them in. So nice. that's that's really cool. And then of course waiver sign, uh, they're asking about kiosks. That we well, see. yeah, Greg, uh, Greg. Yeah, Greg was asking about that, sign. but in, in, for one example too, and the volume too, we well, waiver sign was used recently at a massive college basketball tournament, which will remain unnamed for. <laughs> but anyway, but we had there were like thirty or forty kiosks set up uh, throughout this venue, and within forty eight hours, they had like fifty thousand waivers being signed, all in waiver signs. So it was pretty fantastic. So whatever your operation is, um, and whatever volume you have. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Waiver Sign and Resmark can handle that. So, anyway, I think that's probably a good place to stop, Brandon. We've kind of beat the heck out of an hour here. And so, great questions. Again, anybody interested, we'd be happy to get on a personal demo, show you how the products, your products would look in Resmark, see if it would be a good fit, and to help you uh, implement this 10 step formula that Brandon uh, talked about. Um, as always, head to the Resmark website. Request your demo online, resmarksystems.com, uh, waiversign.com as well. Um, if you're interested in just looking at Waversign, can be used as a standalone product if, if you don't need the full Resmark suite, or it, anytime you can upgrade from Resmark to, to leverage any of these tools. So, Brandon, thanks for your time. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today, and we'll catch you next time on Resmark Webinar Wednesdays. Bye-bye.